Good morning guys from Istanbul. Today we are going to do some of the main things, some of the primary things that you have to do when you're in Istanbul. First, this is my view from my hotel. This hotel is only $10 a night. And look at this. This little view of this cobbled street here. I heard the call to prayer this morning woke me up. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you that later. Early morning, there is basically nobody out here, so we might get this place all to ourselves. On the way to the Blue Mosque, there's this towering Egyptian monolith. I'm pretty sure it's Egyptian, pretty sure I can tell what is Egyptian and what isn't. Um, and I'm not sure why it's here. So right over here you have the Blue Mosque, and then almost directly across from it you have Hagia Sophia. And that is the original mosque, huge mosque that has been here for a long time. I forget the years. And then <laughs> much later they wanted to rival Hagia Sophia or even uh, make a more beautiful, bigger mosque across from it, and that's the Blue Mosque over here. And I guess they kind of failed in their attempt to do that because of money issues. So I think the more impressive one is actually Hagia Sophia. But we're gonna try to see both today and I wanna see what you think. Hello. Hello. Uh, how much are the chestnuts? Uh, 15. Very nice. 15. Then how much? Five lira. Why for Uh America. America, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So one street food you will see all over Istanbul is this corn, roasted corn. I believe it's called misir. I was his first customer of the day, so he seemed very happy to have me. It is very early and people aren't really eating yet. Oh yeah, that is pretty good. Let's see if they have some coffee here. Not Starbucks. Okay, thank you. And I'm just waiting for Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque to open up another 15 minutes or something, finish this coffee, and we'll go check them out. So there's nobody here right now, but these fountains that are outside of mosques like this, people will wash their hands and their feet in these fountains before or after they go inside. So this is the entrance to Hagia Sophia. Look at that ceiling. That is extremely old, almost looks like the paint is crumbling off. It hasn't been restored, so it looks probably original. That's amazing. And that is just the beginning.
There's even a cat worshipping over here. That is a very, very impressive dome up there. Just seems like it's hanging there really unsupported. This half dome here, another dome. There are all these quarter domes on the sides supporting probably the minarets that, that you see on the outside. And then you get all these floating chandeliers like this which you can almost touch, they're so low for this high ceiling. Chandeliers usually don't hang <laughs> so low with the ceiling so high. They're just floating right above like a bunch of halos. This place is an incredible feat, incredible work of art, especially for the time when it was built. But even now, Modern buildings don't stand to this. <laughs> the stained glass, the craftsmanship, and all the details in the carving, in the walls, the painting, the gold. It is unmatched. But we'll go look at the Blue Mosque and see if it is matched right across the street. And there's barely anybody in here right now. I guess I came early enough. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So, Hagia Sophia, or Hagia Sophia, this place was built in 539. And it started as a church, actually, which is interesting because <laughs> it looks like nothing but a mosque to me these days. Many, many years after it started as a church, they converted it into a mosque. But the blue mosque that we're about to go see, now that one started as a mosque and always was. They actually turned this into a museum for a while, and just recently, this year, I believe, they turned this back into a mosque, which is great because you can just walk around, pray, it's, it's more natural, it's what it was put here for. And there we are, blue mosque coming right up, right across the street. Really quick, if you're new here, I'm Alexander Travelbum, and my plan is to travel to every country in the world and share it with you. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see country, every country around the world. <laughs> Very impressive place. So that one was built in 500, 500 something, and the Blue Mosque in 1630 or somewhere around there. So much, much newer. But I think they're very similar. So let's see what the differences are in these both pretty magnificent places. Hello. Is this Simit? You said five? Yeah. Without a doubt, when you're walking around Istanbul, you're going to come across this. Looks like a bagel, doesn't it? This is probably the most unanimous street food in Istanbul. You will find the carts everywhere. There are these, usually these little red carts and you see them all over the city. Well, okay, I guess we're not going to be able to compare this to the other one uh, because there is construction going on on the roof. So the entire roof is gone. 
the entire thing is gone. And then the columns, they're all fake. So they have a picture of the roof instead of the actual roof. So you have a picture of the dome here in the middle. So there's the massive dome of the Blue Mosque. <sighs> so this big column, that's about the only thing that's legit right now. The only thing that's real. And it is a huge, massive, fat column. So if you're a woman, you have to wear these head scarves, and this is where you discard it after you go in. All of this is free, luckily, and even the head scarves for the women. If you don't have one, you need one in order to go inside, and that's free. You don't have to pay for it. Okay. The balcony. Yes, balcony, and you know the hippodrome. They make horse running, right? Uh huh. Hello. You have uh, breakfast? Turkish breakfast? Yes, we have lentil soup, menamen, omelette. So I came here to get a quick breakfast. I wanted a Turkish breakfast, but they pretty much have omelettes here. <laughs> Which is just what I get at home. But at least I got a chai. A Turkish tea. Which everyone in Turkey drinks. Look at that crimson red color. Put a little bit of sugar in there. People drink this all day in Turkey. Oh yeah. So Turkey consumes more tea than any country in the world. And it's because of this specific one. This is what everybody drinks all the time. As always, cats waiting by your table. Always in Istanbul waiting for some scraps. Turkey is one of the few places in the world where I can have tea instead of coffee and I don't really miss coffee. I have coffee every day and I try it wherever I go in the world but this tea really does it for me. Okay, my food just arrived. It is an omelette and although an omelette isn't necessarily Turkish, they do it in a Turkish way. There is some kind of sausage in there. I'm not sure what kind it is. It's not typical for me. So it's some kind of Turkish sausage. It looks like there's a lot of oil coming out of the bottom there. And then you have cucumber and tomatoes on the side, which is very typical of a Turkish breakfast. So I'm happy that along with my tea, it's still kind of Turkish. You can see the oil or the butter just pooling on the top there. Look at all that. You can just squeeze it out like a pimple. Mmm. Hey, what are you doing, huh? There. Okay, now let's walk a little ways through the city. Probably a 20 minute walk to get to the Grand Bazaar area. I say the Grand Bazaar area because it's not only the Grand Bazaar that's there. It is a very intriguing spot that has more to it than, the, than just that. So let's go check it out. Besides the Grand Bazaar, one of the greatest bazaars, the greatest markets in the world, there is a Spice Bazaar nearby, which is also huge and massive in itself. So hopefully we'll check that out as well and maybe find a cool rooftop because Istanbul has such great views it's known for getting some of these views on the rooftops look at the Turkish rugs everywhere but we'll see enough of that at the market soon that's nothing what is that? so this is Burger King and I'm not gonna eat there but I saw in the window that they have some Turkish things so Burger King and McDonald's usually is what I talk about. McDonald's is not the same when you go to other countries. Most of the products will be the same, but in every country they seem to have their own menu of that country specific foods. What are they all having Famous Turkish sweets.
Okay, this is it. Okay, welcome to Mizir Sarsisi. <laughs> That's as close as I'm gonna get. Mizir Sarsisi, the spice market. But it's really not only spices. There are some spices. This seems much newer than the Grand Bazaar, which is very, very old. I mean, it looks kind of modern almost. So, not sure when this was built, but yeah, spices, spices, more spices, dried fruit. We have baklava and candy, some jewelry. So it's just like another a smaller Grand Bazaar that's not as old. <laughs> we have a lot of teas, a lot of teas. So, wow, that was the first woman owner of a shop, or maybe she doesn't own it, but the first woman I've seen working a shop. Almost all of these are, got, are men, and they're all coming up trying to sell me stuff, trying to get me to try candy. I guess there are a couple in this market, but not many. Look at this, the second you stop for one second, they get on you. Tea, all different kind of tea, soap. Okay, and that was the Spice Bazaar. That is nothing compared to the Grand Bazaar, let me tell you. Okay, it's time for a kebab, the most popular thing, I think, in Istanbul. Okay, which, which one is this? 100 gram. 100. So whenever you see the vertical spit, that it the vertical rotisserie where the meat is hanging on it and being cooked next to a flame that is for the doner thank you yeah it looks good you want to say hello it's a video <laughs> cool <laughs> thank you mm. so you have your lamb pickles lettuce fries now we're gonna try something that is more of an experience i guess the food is the food is good but this is more of an entertainment kind of thing take it please <laughs> oh thank you i'm gonna go i can't get it I just went through a tunnel from the area where I thought everybody was <laughs> next to all the things but on this other side here's the water the Bosphorus one of the things that makes Istanbul really special is this skyline the mosques the tower I think it's Galata tower I showed you the other day See that on the skyline above everything else? The water on several sides of the city. Not many cities like this. Oh, this is uh, pickle juice. This? I don't know why I'm doing this, but I heard this is a thing. So pickle juice is a thing here in Turkey. Not fun. <sighs> Alright guys, it's been a long day. I think I'm done for the day, but tomorrow it's gonna be amazing. You'll see in the next video. Please like this video, it really helps me out. 
leave a comment, any comment, and I will see you in the next one. I'm Alexander Travel Bob. Join me as I travel to every country in the world.